Good morning. This is Judy from Artistic Artifacts in um, snowy Alexandria, Virginia. We have had two snow events, which is very abnormal for here. So some of you guys who live up in the north think we're wimps, and I would have to say probably when we get, you know, one to four inches, five inches, the place shuts down. So um, we're, that's what we're in the midst of is, is a snowy Alexandria, which is actually very beautiful. So um, for those of you who go through three months of snow, you have my blessings. We just like it occasionally. So uh, what's new? What's new with you guys? We have um, Artistic Artifacts Creative Minds Facebook page. And, um, oh. <laughs> That Chris was telling me I'd thump me my teeth. Uh, <laughs> we um, we would like you to post what you're doing. We that is for your um, that's our community page. That's for us to communicate and show off and show us what you're making and doing. And we really um, love seeing posts. Um, I know there were some couple of posts last week about what I made last week with the thread. And was that Carolyn? I think it was Carolyn. That was awesome to see. Thank you so much for doing that. We, um, that was, I think, really helpful to see how you use those ideas. So today, um, we're going to work with silk paper. And silk paper is, you know, we kind of are using silk. If you're using wool, you're going to needle felt it into a position. If you're using silk or we're using paper and napkins and things, you have to have some type of glue, really, that is gonna hold it together. So, um, and it comes in different shapes, different patterns. Here I've stamped it. Here's a um, photo transfer, some foil. Uh, so it, it becomes a surface to further embellish. And here's some more. And uh, so that is one of the um, things that, again, is a stash. So if you look here, you can see my stash drawer. So this is all my silk paper and some of my special pieces I'm gonna, I used to do some Angelina with it. Um, oh, there's a piece, oops. Okay, well, there was a thought process. I'm not sure what it is now, but oh, maybe this is my felting drawer too. But, um, and here's some hand dyed pieces here. So that is um, kind of my drawer. So these Saturday mornings, you're helping me to challenge me to get my drawer out and to finish some things. So I appreciate that. There's, um, Kyle, can you go get the book called Silk Fusion? I forgot to bring that. And this is um, textile medium. So you can use matte medium. I've had some questions about GAC, which is a golden product for textiles. It, whatever you're used to using is fine. You're gonna find that there's different layers of stiffness um, or different types of stiffness that's gonna occur depending on what you're using. Like one time I did fabric paper with Elmer's glue and oh my gosh, I could have cut my fingers with a knife because of the makeup of the Elmer's glue. But that's one of the things that you, you know, be aware of. Thank you. Um, so this is one of the few books that um, has been out uh, about Silk Fusion. And it is um, really actually very interesting way of looking at it. So I, mine is a little more collage but hers is a little more, let me see if I can get to the page. She's, she's a little more predictable in how she's doing it and how she uses it. But it's, a, it's really a nice, so she's cutting solid pieces out. You know, if anybody has a Cricut, look at this one. This is really cool where it's very solid pieces. Um, like she's created this, this wonderful raw silk piece and uses it. So this is a great book 
Um, highly recommend it if you want to see some ways of working with this silk. All right. So. Okay. Sorry. Deep coffee. Um, how's everybody doing out there? Are we having a good day today? I think it would be a creative day. Um, we are uh, still working on a few things and finding some things for our inventory. And so we'll, we'll have some great sales section. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to remind you that we did cancel both our beginning quilting class and our embroidery, um, beginning embroidery class. There is, uh, the embroidery class has maybe two, piece, two openings on Tuesday, and then we're going to hold it on February 3rd. So when we do these monthly classes, we're gonna have a weekday and we're gonna have a weekend. So just uh, be aware that that's happening there's um we we are open we are all here the roads are clear um once you get to the secondary roads and it's just our parking lot that's um uh, still a little icy that concerns me so i want everybody to be safe and um but we are here and we are open we just didn't think anybody wanted to be dealing with their sewing machines in this weather so we we changed it Okay, thanks Chris. All right, silk paper. The basics, um, so as you can see, I use a lot of texture. Let me see about this here. And this is kind of my bag of stuff that just gets put back in there. So we have hand dyed silk packs that are absolutely gorgeous absolutely beautiful and you can get a lot of silk paper out of these these are all online they're 100 percent tussa silk hand dyed in the u.s we know the owner of the company is wonderful we susan we, we've done a lot with shows so but once um i have told you guys i'm messy right you know that okay good because once I open a package, this is what happens. It gets all pushed into all the rest of my stuff. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of a hanky there. So, the tools that you need for silk paper. Silk, netting, which is cheap netting, you know, wherever you can get it. Um, textile medium, and I usually use a larger um, brush, like a, a stencil brush, and we sell them. This just happened to be in my kit, is um, because you need a stiff bristle to put the textile medium through the silk paper. So um, that's one of the things, but I like those other um, brushes. Curse will put them on the link, I will show you, because they're the round stencil brushes, but they have these same kind of bristles and they're tough. They get a lot of through. I take my textile medium and do 50-50. 50 water, 50 textile medium. Um, you can do any, you know, that the relationship is based on your experience. So water to textile medium is not a big deal. And trust me, I'm not measuring it. I'm going, eh, okay, and then we add a little bit of water. Just, you know, don't let the measurements fool you or hold you up. Okay, do we have any questions yet? A lot of highs, I'm sure. Sorry, yes. I'm like talking a mile a minute this morning. So Libby's watching this morning. Yeah, oh wow, it's early there. Um, Libby's in California. So, unless she's not. Uh, what is the name of the puller of the silk packs? Treenway um, is the dyer, and these are 100% Tussa silk and she's got them all here silk roving is where they are on our website okay all right any other questions lots of good mornings and good blues. mornings yeah sorry i'm kind of on a zoom i mean like yeah i'm on live but I, i'm like 
supposed to be fun. Slow down. Okay, here we go. So, I like to work with a pan because I like to contain the textile medium. You don't have to, but I would suggest that if you have some vinyl, that you protect your surface with the vinyl because you're gonna let it dry on the vinyl. So I had a class once, I had just very, very early on, and we were probably working in a table in the back of the store, and we let took our silk paper out, and we hung it on a dryer on this um, at the front of the store. And what happens is that the textile medium dripped down and it was all kinds of different colors and it dripped onto the sidewalk. It doesn't come off. So just be aware <laughs> that that happens. So let's see, we'll try, if I was to do it, more evenly okay so here this is this is silk roving so it's all very neat it's aligned so when you think this is totally they've taken words from wool and felting so when you have wool that's a roving it's all combed in the right direction um, and to and silk is very very strong and you're going to hold and pull okay Yep. One can you use wool roving and the other is can you use bamboo roving? Oh, bamboo. Um, you can mix some wool into your silk, but I would not use this for wool. Well, I, I mean, I guess you could, but be aware you're adding glue to your fiber, so it's going to change the hand. I mix a little bit of wool in with it, but for the most part, I think I would needle felt maybe the wool because it's not gonna change the hand of it. Or wet felt. Or wet felt, yes. Now, we do have a felting class, um, dry felting, needle felting with needles that Liz Kettle is teaching in April here. So um, she's using, and she'll use silk and, and bits and pieces and all that kind of stuff. She'll show you how to work with a multimedia um, piece and not just straight felt. So I don't know that it's the best way to have the characteristics of the wool after you're done. So, and we can needle felt silk into wool absolutely beautiful when that happens but I'm not sure okay we'll have to try it and the other question was uh, bamboo, roving. bamboo roving I have no experience with that you people have bamboo yarn does it act the same way it acts pretty much the same way as silk so it, it would be worth trying absolutely yeah that would be cool if you have some, try it, post it in Creative Minds, let us know how it went, and try the wool too. I'll, go to, I'll try the wool also. Um, so uh, it's, it's kind of, I very rarely say no, but I might say, well, let's look at the properties that we, by using this material, and how do we accentuate the properties rather than cover them up. Does that make sense? Okay. Good questions. All right, so I am going to attempt to do this orderly. <laughs> you know, that's not my wheelhouse. So I have a piece of this netting here. It's in my pan. And I'm going to first make a thin layer. So I can dictate how thick my new fabric is gonna be by how much of my roving I put down. All right, so I'm gonna go in one direction. still see I have a little Angelina in there or, which has gotten a little bit harder to find that now 
Okay, now I'm going to go this way. This way. This way. All right. So. And I don't know, silk hankies are square pieces of silk and they stick to your fingers. So that's really the purpose of the netting is to control the silk. Okay. So. This is weird. I wonder if there's. God. Chris, can you get me a paper towel, please? Mm -hmm. So I used to very meticulously um, dab and pour. Now I just pour. But you don't want too much. And you do want it to go all the way through. know what's in my jar so I'm gonna do I'm gonna have it absorb and brushing is one thing but I want it to go all the way through and I've maybe poured a little too generously but that's okay so So that is, that is it. So when you need to let it dry completely, and um, the reason is the netting will come off when you dry completely. And I usually dry it flat. So it'll be overnight. Um, the best thing about winter for me is my furnace is on and everything dries really fast in my furnace room. So that's uh, the best thing for me. You could hang it, but as I said, please be careful when you're hanging things that you have something to catch the um, textile medium, matte medium, whatever you're using so that it's not, um, it's not going on the ground unprotected. So there's that one. Now, have another piece of netting ready and you can see how precisely the netting is cut just you know I wouldn't want to wouldn't want to fool you um, now we'll do it my way okay you ready for this okay let's think about it so this is a hanky we don't really get them too much anymore um, but it was pieces of silk that um, I guess were in the shape of a square hanky and that's how it got. A lot of times I'll use this as a basis here and you can see, see how it sticks? Yeah, it always sticks. Um, people would spin these into their own yarn which is absolutely amazing. Okay, so I have that kind of as my base. So my back is going to be yellow and I am gonna put, remember our bag of stuff or fluff? Um, so let's see. Does anybody have any questions while I'm putzing? So I have, these are threads. I take all the threads from my high dot, hand dyed fabric and I save them. Um, I don't generally, you could actually create a picture if you wanted at this point. I usually am not thinking that far ahead. I'm just making bits. But I am looking at what colors do I like together and that type of thing. So let's see, we have a little bit of this. Yellow and turquoise, how can you go wrong with that?
kind of lock some stuff in there and say I want these are my I have plenty of sequins but I can't always find them these are some vintage sequins that have holes in them you want to trap them underneath something so meaning that I, I put them over here so they're kind of in the background a little bit you're trapping them in some of this silk so then what I would most likely will do is I'll take some of these vintage sequins and then I'll stitch them on the foreground and see how that works now this is a silk rod again we're not getting too much silk waste and the question is this is all from stuff that's coming up off the floor in these where the silk is being packaged and made um, spun there's all kinds of dust that comes up um, there we have a question yep <clears throat> can you use textile medium and that medium you can you're just going to get a different um, a different feel so try it and see if it works for you go for it um, you know you want to test it out and see if it's something that you like to do and and then if it is I always say you know go with what you have but if it is something that you like then buy the best materials that you can afford um, but to test it out and you want to see if you have stuff go for it so much of what I do is recycled or I find it it's it's um, so okay maybe I need a little more color so I kind of pull this silk apart like this I don't necessarily, you know, this is like ripping fabric or ripping um, papers. You know, there is a time and a place for ripping fabric. We don't do it in the store. We cut our fabric, but um, there are times where you want it ripped. Right, Seth? Yes. So, so that's, that's there. Um, um, we've been asked to repeat the question. Oh, I'm it. sorry. Since you can't hear me because it's yes i apologize you're right thanks for that reminder so the question is can you use textile medium and matte medium again you don't you're going to fit water it down 50 50. using textile medium is going to give you a different result than using matte medium or GAC is what golden's textile medium is try it if that's what you have try things if you like it and you want to continue to do it then i recommend you buying materials the best materials that you can afford. So that's that. Did I need? Did I have to repeat any other questions? I forgot. Uh, no, it was okay. Just that one. All right, but thank you. That I made a comment is that you don't need to lay the silk down thick. No. Nope. You can really spread it out and um, make it very it. thin. Yeah. Yes. Correct. You can do it. You 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 determine the thickness by the number of layers. Okay. So now. We're gonna take all these things, and again, this is where the netting, I have a little bit of string, I let have a little a silk hanky, some, some other silk components. And this is, this is what you do. So um, I would say there's you know, you can make pieces out of it. You can cut them apart. You can make them be a whole cloth, so to speak. This it this takes machine stitching and hand stitching really, really nicely. It's wonderful to take these and and um, to take the next step of embellishment. Of course, there's you know, everything likes beads, um, so you can see. And that's it. It's easy. It's fun. I like those instant gratification things. 
Okay. And could you repeat again about how long it takes to dry? It's going to take overnight. So it's not something that you can, and I, again, put it in my furnace room now that it's winter and things dry much faster then. Um, but yeah, it'll, it'll take overnight to go through it. And you might have to like flip it halfway through um, to make sure both sides are dry before you work with it. And then, you know, it really is, this is, this is dry. So this is probably, if you see, you know, you can see how you can get such different this is a little bit stiffer, this is a more drapey. It, it just depends on how you layer it and how much medium you put in it. So here's the stiff one. Okay, then you can see, can you, can you see the sequins in that one? There's some sequins in there. And the netting is removed um, after it's dry. Completely dry. Do not try to remove the netting when it's somewhat wet because it won't come off. And then it becomes part of the collection of items that you have glued together. So. And you, um, Suzanne missed the step that you put the netting on both sides. Yes, the netting is in this piece, um, you'll see. I kind of prepped my containers. So my netting is in the bottom to contain my silk. That's all it's doing is containing. And then you're going to put this over because if you don't have the netting, the brush is going to pick up all of the silk pieces. So you want the netting as a control agent for what you're putting in here. So netting goes top and bottom soak it both sides so that the, it goes through and I mean I maybe was a little generous with the, the textile medium and um, let it dry completely and the netting will come off if it doesn't it just you incorporate it it's easy can it be washed when dry I don't think so I don't um, I don't again make things to be washed um, I would think once you're using kind of a polymer base medium, I would say don't wash it. That would be my guess. So not to use it as an embellishment on a jacket or something that you might wash? No. No, I don't think so. Unless somebody's tried it and washed it, I don't think it would work. Um, could you use tool in place of the netting? Yes, absolutely. You can use uh, screen material instead of the netting. So netting just happens to be something we have a lot of and doesn't matter, you know, the size of the holes or anything. But at the beginning, we used to do screening from the hardware store. Could you repeat the question? For, <laughs> for the can you use um, netting or tool? What can you use to contain? Thank you for keeping me honest. So we used to, you can use screening you can use netting, you can use tool, it, it's um, plastic is really what you're doing, it's a polymer on top of a polymer. So yes, all, any of that will work. And do you want to show the products again? Yes, I can. So um, the what I'm using is textile medium, which we have in the store. We have hand dyed silk, that's absolutely beautiful from um, the uh, company in the US. And then this is the most recent book, uh, well, it's actually been out for a couple of years, called Silk Fusion, that um, there's just periodic books about it. I think there's another one that just came out, I, I'm not sure. Um, but this is what we have about the Silk Fusion process. Okay. And I really do like a stencil brush rather than this brush, but you can see that, that that were a chip brush worked because a lot of times if you don't wash the glue out of these guys you're just throwing them away and it's an inexpensive brush okay any other questions all right so if you're playing along you want to have some silk paper done for next month fabric paper what was the third one I did oh thread <laughs> thread stuff. So um, do I have any, I have some examples, I think. Yeah. So 
this is one that I did on camera. So I did some hand stitching and um, washed, put the wash away out. This is another one that I did. Remember with the wood block that had all those circles? I used that as a pattern. And I have, um, so if you're, I'm gonna work with those and show you what I'm gonna do. Then I made some fabric paper and I sewed, you can see it's all around this, the bird. So that's there. So I've already started coming up with some projects. This one is just kind of a free form one. I think I showed you the last time. So next month we will have um, a Facebook Live showing you what I've created with each of these pieces. And um, hopefully we'll have some show and tell by other people who have worked on it. So there was another question mm -hmm. that the question was, does it have to be only silk in the, oh, the piece? Yeah, so I pulled no. a couple of examples. Okay. So we, uh, skeleton leaves, you can usually get in the, um, we used to have them, I loved them, but you can put leaves in there, these, and you can put sari silk in there. This is the um, sequins. This is a photo transfer that with transfer artist paper that's there. This is um, very gluey. Um, cheesecloth. Yeah, so this is cheesecloth, a lot of thread, cheesecloth thread in there. Um, this is a piece of hand dyed trim uh, that's in there as well. So, and you can go either side, you know, maybe if you like, the, the sides are, the back and the front are going to be different. Almost like the back better than I like the front. Yeah, look at that. So that needs to go in something soon. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Hmm. And as I said, it takes machine stitching and hand stitching wonderfully. It's really great. Um, I use chenille needles when I'm doing hand stitching. I would do a 90 needle on this um, 12 weight thread in the top, 50 weight thread in the bottom, because you want some thread that will show up and accent the colors. So those are some ideas for you. And I hope that you will join me and play along and um, create some of this between now and February. Are there any other questions? Okay, all right. Thank you for joining me today. All of the products that I showed you are available on our website, artisticartifacts.com. And we look forward to seeing you online or in the store and hope that you have a creative day. Thank you.